In this video, I'm going to show you how you can build a million dollar app using no code tools like Lovable and N8N. The app I'm talking about, Cal AI, which pulls in $1.4 million every single month. The beauty of Cal AI is that it's incredibly simple once you think about it. You take a picture of your food, and the app calculates how many calories and macros were in that food. Now, if you think about it, you can use OpenAI's image analyzer to do exactly that. So what we're going to do is build a front end using Lovable and build the back end using N8N. And the best part, we're going to try to finish this in less than 30 minutes. If you're new here, my name is Shub and I teach people how to use AI and build automations to level up in their business and their professional life. First thing that we need to do is connect the back end to save our data. And for that, we're going to be using Superbase. I already have a Superbase account. So if you don't have one, just go ahead and set one up. And then you can inside Lovable, inside Superbase, go ahead and set up your project. I'm calling it Calorie Tracker Demo. Give it a database password. Choose the closest region to you and go ahead and create that project. Right now that the project is set up, we can go back into Lovable and click the plus icon connect database and choose the new project that you just made. This is going to connect that backend to whatever app that we're going to make using Lovable. I have a prompt over here in which I'm explaining to Lovable exactly what I want to build and the steps that I'm asking it to take to do that. I'm going to paste that prompt in here. Now, the structure of the prompt is first an overview of what the app does. And then the main functionality, the one thing that that app is supposed to do. How it's going to do it. What it's going to do once it processes the data. And what the main screen should look like. And then I'm also providing it some extra information for other screens. So essentially, this app is going to have one screen for users to upload pictures of their food, one screen to see previous data, and another screen to modify their profile. I put that prompt into Lovable, and it's just going to do its thing. So first, it's going to ask me to make some database changes which is basically Lovable giving instructions to Superbase as to what exactly needs to be in the back end and the data that we need to save. So I've clicked Approve and Lovable is going to make those changes to the database and then once those changes are made, it's going to start working on the other pages. So I'm just going to let this run for a few minutes while it goes ahead and builds out the app. All right, so the way that Lovable has set this up is that it is using a Superbase Edge function, which is a piece of code that lives on Superbase, which will accept the input from the app, process it, and send output back to the app. Now, it's using sample data for now, as we can see from this code over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take all of this code, copy it, and dump it into Claude, or you can use ChatGPT if you want and give it instructions to convert this edge function into something that will actually send the data to the webhook and wait for the webhook response. So Claude is asking me for some extra information, what the webhook URL is, and what the response format should be, should there be any authentication. So I'm just going to go into N8N, get the webhook URL, uh, provide these parameters to Claude, and it'll generate the code for us. So here I am in N8, and I'm going to drop a webhook onto the canvas. And we need to make sure that it is a post webhook, not a get webhook. And the response can be immediately for now. And then we'll change that uh, once we start production. So we're back in Claude. I'm going to provide it with the webhook URL and also give it answers to all of the other questions that it had, that there's no authentication, and give it a sample for what the what kind of response that it should expect. So Claude's going to do its thinking and it's going to output the updated edge function for us. Once that output is done, I'm just going to go ahead and copy that and paste it into Superbase. 
So I've pasted this into Superbase. I'm going to click Deploy Updates, and it's going to update the Edge function. Now we're back in Lovable. I'm going to try signing up and seeing how the app works. There is a chance that we may run into errors, so let's go ahead and see what happens. I'm going to click Sign Up, and we have indeed run into an error. So we now have to fix the error. There's probably some issue with the sign up and we can start testing once that issue is fixed. So we're asking Lovable to figure out what the issue is with the sign up. Lovable is going to do its thinking. It's going to attempt to make those changes to the database and to the code. And once the app is refreshed, we're, let's try signing up again. It's asking me to approve some database changes. Let's do that. So we have the confirmation that it is fixed. Let's try signing up again. Sign up. And we have the confirmation that the account has been created. All right, so let's sign in and check out what the app looks like. All right, that's beautiful. We have calories, protein, carbs, and fat. The counters up at the top. Below that, we have a way to add food where we can either uh, type it in with text. We also have a history. We can go into the profile and set our daily nutrition targets, change the password. So let's go ahead and give some sample data there and save it just to make sure that the database saving also works. Let's if we hit update. Okay, perfect. The profile did update correctly. Now if we go back into the dashboard, uh, well, we can now start configuring the webhook. So back in NADN, we're waiting for a trigger event. Let's go ahead and type something in here and click Analyze Food. So we're getting an error here, but that's okay because all we want to know is whether the webhook is actually receiving data. And we can see that we are indeed receiving data. Perfect. So the next step would be to start processing this data and sending it back to our uh, app. Now, since we're going to be either sending text or an image, I'm going to use a Edit Fields or a Set node to create the prompt and then use that set node variable to feed the AI agent. So I'm going to create a variable called prompt and uh, drag in the text field. And then we can click out again. And I'm just going to pin the webhook data so we don't have to keep submitting it while we do the configuration. And there the edit fields node is set. Now I'm going to click here again and search for open AI. And Go ahead and select Message a Model. In this configuration screen, we can choose the model. I'm going to stick to ChatGPT 4.1 because I found that it, it's the fastest. For some reason, the 4.1 API is even faster than the 5.0 API. Um, scroll down and remember to enable output content as JSON. And then expand the prompt. And let's go ahead and give it instructions for what we want this agent to do. So we're going to provide it with a description of whatever food that we ate, and we're asking it to calculate the calories, the grams of protein, the grams of fat, the grams of carbs, and output all of that as JSON in the format that we've given below. It's pretty straightforward. Now we need to change the role of that instruction to system, and then add another message with the user role in which we'll actually pass in the prompt, which is the description of the food in question. So we'll drag the prompt in, and now that that's set, we can click out. So let's test everything to make sure the output is okay. If we double click, we'll see that indeed we have the name of the food, calories, proteins, grams, fats, and a confidence score as well. Incredible. So the basic mechanics of our agent is set. Now all we need to do is to send this data back to our app, which we can do by using the respond to webhook node. Now the response format is going to be custom JSON because there's a lot of information and we only need to send a little bit. And we need to create a JSON structure uh, that matches what the app expects in the edge function. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, drag and drop all the fields from the left into the custom JSON body. And uh, if this feels a little daunting right now, don't worry, you can just go ahead and click the link in the description and uh, you can grab the exact template for this workflow with all the prompts and all the data baked into it. So that's everything done. And we can see in the preview that uh, the structure looks OK. So we can click back out, save, uh, unpin the webhook, 
And there's one more thing we need to change is instead of respond immediately, that which we use for testing, we want to use respond to webhook node to send the information back. Let's click save and then click execute the workflow, go back to lovable and uh, try running this workflow again. So we have our input. I'm going to click analyze food. And we'll see that the NADN workflow has executed. We go back to lovable, scroll down, and we'll see that we have an analysis result. Perfect. So we can just click save to daily log if we're satisfied. And we'll see that our daily log has updated with those calories and those macros. If we go into history, we'll see that the history is also updated. And just to make sure that the data is persisting, I'm going to log out and log back in and just see whether the data is still there. So logging back in, we'll see that indeed the data is still there. We can go back and see that in the history as well. Now we can start the image analysis. So I'm uploading this image of a burger. If we click analyze, uh, we're going to run into an error for now because we don't have anything, any way of uh, analyzing the image. But we'll see in the webhook that in the body of the webhook under image URL, we're getting these weird characters. So this is actually a base64 string, which is the file converted into text. Uh, so we can use a code node to convert this base64 text into something that, um, into an actual image that we can then upload to the image analysis engine. So at the start of this text, there are a few characters that we need to remove. That's what we'll do using the code node. But first, we're going to need to split the workflow to process text and images. So we're going to do that using a switch. And the conditions for the switch are, if there is a image URL field, it's going to go down one path where the image URL exists. And we can rename the output and call it image. And we can go down and add a fallback output, which is basically everything else, or in this case, text, right? So we just select extra output, click back out, and just reconnect these nodes. So the fallback goes into this edit fields because that's for text. And we can start the image workflow now. I'm just going to save and hit execute. And if we execute, we'll see that the image node has uh, lit up. So let's click here, drop in the code node paste in the code that we got from ChatGPT. And again, you can grab this template by clicking the link in the description. We just need to make sure that the variable is correct. So I'm going to replace this variable here with image URL from the left. And if I click execute, we'll get the cleaned up base64 string and we'll also get the extension as well. And then we can use NADN's base64 to file node to convert this into an actual image. Back on the canvas, we can select convert to file and choose the last option, move base64 string to file. Click on it. And under base64 input field, we're going to drag in the base64 output from the code node. So drag that in. Then uh, go down under options, click mime type, where we need to specify the file type and type in image slash and then drag in the extension from the left. So this way, it'll handle PNG files, it'll handle JPEG files, everything. Click back out. Let's hit save. Execute the workflow to test. And the convert to file node has succeeded. If we click there and click view, we'll see that the image is now reconstructed, that we can now send to OpenAI's image analysis. So let's just make some room by dragging this down. Click the plus icon search for OpenAI, and we'll select Analyze an Image, right? Now, under Input Type, choose Binary Files, because that's what we have on the left. For the model, choose GPT-40, and, and give it a prompt. And we also wanted to give approximate quantities as well. So if we click Execute, we'll see that uh, we have a fairly detailed description of what ever was in that photo, a fried chicken sandwich in this example, with approximate quantities as well. So this we are now going to feed into our chat model. And we can do that by uh, using another edit fields node. So I'm going to move over a little bit 
is copy the edit field zone from the bottom, paste it up here, hook it up to the analyze image node. And if we double click, we'll see that the prompt is already there. We just need to replace the variable. Uh, so the variable is replaced. We can click back out and hook up this edit fields node to the message a model node. And that basically completes the entire workflow. We're repeating it, the prompt either from text or from the image analysis. And that model is going to analyze it and send the response back via the webhook. So I'm going to hit save, unfin the webhook, and uh, save one more time. Let's click execute, go back into Lovable, and try uploading the photo one more time. Let's upload the photo, hit analyze food, and pop back into NADN, and we'll see that the workflow is running. It's analyzing the image, and then it's going to send it to OpenAI to analyze the calorie content, and then use the respond to webhook node to send that back to Lovable. And if we scroll down in Lovable, we'll see that we do indeed have our analysis result ready to go. Now the last step is just to change the webhook from the test URL to the production URL. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy that production URL, go back into Superbase, in the edge function, go up to where the webhook URL is, and just replace the existing URL with the production URL. And once we replace that and deploy the new edge function, we can now make that NADN workflow live and Lovable will work with NADN on the fly without us having to click execute every single time. NADN, just make the workflow active, and then come back into Lovable, give it an input, click analyze food, and it'll take a few seconds to run that analysis and give us an output. The app also looks incredible on a tablet or a mobile view. And there is your $1 million app that we made in less than 20 minutes. If you enjoyed this tutorial, I'd really appreciate it if you could give this video a like. And do remember to subscribe to the channel for more AI and automation content.